Hello, Godower. Today, we're going to learn how to make a diagonal auto tile set. That's a 256 piece set, but we're going to do it the easy way. All right, so first let's go over the tools that we're going to need. You'll need Godot, of course. Uh, for the version that I'm using, you'll want 3.5.1 stable if you want exactly what I have in this video. You'll also need Tile Pipe version 2, which is free and available on itch.io. It's in alpha currently, but it will still, in its current state, do exactly what we need to accomplish this quickly. You'll also want to go grab the 256 asymmetrical tile set template. The download link is in the description from my GitHub. And you'll need a, some kind of graphics editing program to manipulate that in, obviously. Uh, I'm going to be working in pixel art, so I'll be using a sprite. But it doesn't really matter what program you use or what style you use, so long as you follow the steps. If you follow the guidelines, you should be able to come to the same basic result. So first things first, let's download Godot. If you haven't already done so, you can come over to godotengine.org, come down a little ways and download 351. Uh, once you have that downloaded, you'll also want to get Tilepipe 2 from itch.io. Um, you can download now. If you want, you can toss him five bucks. I recommend it. He's been working very hard on this software and it's makes it's gonna make your life so much easier when it comes to making tile sets. So I recommend it. But if you don't have the means to do that, just no thanks, take me to the downloads and you're gonna wanna download the one that's appropriate for your operating system. Lastly, you're going to want to download the templates that are available in my GitHub repository, which all of these, again, are linked in the description of this video. Uh, if you want to go ahead and pause to make sure you have all those downloaded, I will meet you back here shortly. So before we get into the meat and potatoes of the actual project here, there's a couple of things that you are going to need to be aware of to make this tile set work on a diagonal. First off is that Godot handles tile maps in squares. This is really a poor square, but that's, we'll pretend that's actually a square. Now with diagonals, and the reason you don't see them very often is when you have two squares like this, squares, yeah, um, when you're going from this one to this one, you're going to have this diagonal, these pieces are going to be left as gaps. And since these only connected a corner, you're not actually going to have a connection here, right? So in order to remedy that, we take our tile size, which for my project is going to be 32 pixels, and the tile set that we're actually going to work with has to come out about 50% larger. So these are going to be not about exactly 50% larger in this case. So this is going to be 48 pixels by 48 pixels. And that will let us have textures here and here to complete the full diagonal. We can do this, like I said, tile pipe makes this actually fairly easy to do. You just have to be aware of doing the maths right. So whatever your target tile size is, and like I said, in this case, 32 pixels by 32 pixels, you're going to multiply that by 1.5, which in my case equals 48. And this is actually the tile size that we're going to be working in. Now that we know what our target tile size is and our working tile size, uh, target tile size, of course, being the tile size that you want it to be in Godot on the tile map, and working size being 1.5 times that. So in my case, 32 pixels versus 48. We can actually go ahead and set up our file for the appropriate size. Now, tile pipe takes a horizontal input image and it mixes and matches the pieces that you create there to make your full tile set, your full 256 tiles out of this, out of this file that we're making. That being in mind, we're going to need to make our height the exact same as our working tile set size because it's just going to be one tile high. It's going to be 25 tiles long, 
which if you have a sprite, you can just type in your working tile size times 25 and hit tab and that'll give you the size that you need. If you don't have a piece of software that does that, well, you can do that maths in the calculator and just plug that in and you'll be fine. I've gone ahead and switched over to the actual a sprite file that's available in the GitHub repository for the templates. I just prefer working in a sprite and it's already there, so I made it easy on myself, but you can achieve the same result in any software that uses layers by putting your sample layer on a lower layer and the mask above it. And you're going to want to work in a new layer on the in between the two. This preserves the sample layer for you as well as the mask layer so you're not accidentally overriding something that you shouldn't be and you're not causing yourself uh, a headache trying to go back and reload and etc etc. So if we zoom in here you can let's take a look at the mask first let's turn off the sample and let's take a look at the mask. You can see that the mask is comprised of these black sections as well as the light blue sections. The black sections are pretty much going to be ignored by Godot when this tile set is imported into the Godot game editor or the Godot engine, however you want to describe that. The important, the even more important part and the part that makes this all function and makes this easy is actually these light blue sections that are sort of highlighted in here. Those are indicators that this section needs to be a repeatable section by itself. It needs to seamlessly be able to be repeated on its own and with anything else in the tile set because there are certain circumstances and certain places in the tile pipe algorithm where these are going to be placed next to things that need to have an edge pixel at the same point that these have edge, edge pixels. To make your life easier if you're working in pixel art or even if you're working in like SVGs or something, just use the sample as a guideline of where those should start and end. And then all if you just use this split of like, we'll say grass to path or off path to on path, then you can be sure that by having your pixels at the edges here line up with the pixels on the edges here in the sample, they're gonna work great. Um, I'll give you a better overview of that as we get into editing the tile set. It's probably a little confusing the way I explained it and it might be easier just to see it. So for now, let's just say that these need to be self-repeatable and work from there. So once we have our file set up like this. I'm going to go ahead and lock my mask and sample layers so I don't accidentally edit them because if you've ever worked in anything on layers before, it's extremely easy to accidentally end up on a layer you don't want to be on. So let's just, we know we're not going to change those. Let's just lock them and not have to worry about it. Now I'm going to change this tile set to be a, uh, let's say we're going to do a beach and water tile set. So the water is going to be where the path is, and the beach is going to be where the edge is, the grass is in this case. So I'm going to go ahead, whoops, I'm going to grab the correct tool, and I'll let you watch me as I do this. I'll kind of explain as I go, and uh, let you know why I'm doing what I'm doing. We're going to actually come in here and refer the visible layers so I can do it this way. Turn off my mask for a moment, actually, while I do this. And turn off contiguous and just turn on. There we go. Okay, so now all my dirt is water. I'm going to change this pixel here. This might need change on yours as well. Because that looks like that was part of files. Okay. Same for the beach. So we're going to, we have a one, two, three, four four, five, six color ramp here. So what do I got here? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, beach is this color. So I'm gonna go in here. We're gonna fill that in. We're gonna fill that in. We're gonna ramp down and fill that in. And then that, and then that, and then that. Whoops, not that, that. Okay, so I've got sort of a beachy color scheme now. And again, because I locked 
the sample layer. My sample layer is still there, unchanged, and I can work on my beach no problem. Now we can kind of get into the nitty gritty of this here. I'm gonna switch my tools here that I'm using. I'm gonna switch off of my mouse. I'm gonna switch to my tablet. You don't have to. We're gonna come in and we're gonna start giving a little flavor to our edges here. We're not gonna do it though with the bucket tool. We're gonna do that with the pencil tool. Okay, so let's say we want now again, here, I'm not gonna touch this just yet. I'm gonna leave this masked part for now and I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna add some waviness to the water here. I want all of my edges to always line up with this last edge. I want to make sure that they're all gonna line up correctly. So you want this to be at the exact same height, this transition from beach to water in this case, or path to grass, etc. You're gonna want that always at the same height. And then here, if I want just a little wave, we'll do that. And then, okay, done. We've got a little bit of a wave. Now, if we wanna add some flavor to the beach, let's add some footprints. Again, we don't wanna come over here unless we're doing a fully contained, we don't want anything to cross these two because it'll look goofy. We want a fully contained edit in there. Okay, and this one you can see I put to the edge here. This isn't going to matter because this is going to be a two pixels wide. So no matter what that's up against, it's going to be fine. And then over here in the corner, let's see, we can add, let's add a little bit of some sea foam maybe at the edge of these waves here let's do that back here too let's add some sea foam at the edge of our waves okay looking good so we got some sea foam again this is not going to be an amazing tile set, I'm gonna say, because I am just kind of quickly going through this and making something so you guys can see how this is supposed to work. Some more waves here. Fill this in. Ooh, that's a little too much, went a little wild there. Okay. We can even bring the beach down a little bit here if we want the beach to be, we want those waves receding. And then again, we can come here and we can kind of bring this up some. Whoops. But again, see how I went up there? That is not what I want to do. I want to bring this. If I want this up, it needs to come back down before it reaches the edge. Okay. Now these sections, you can add some detail to the path or the water area, whatever, what have you. Um, these are filler blocks, essentially, that are going to fill in some spaces in your tile set as Tile Pipe makes them. Uh, there's one here. There's one for, th yes, there are three of them here. One, two, three. And those, like I said, those are just fillers. They are going to be part of the blue in very limited scenarios. Um, so you can decorate them up if you want to, just keep things self-contained as you would in the sections that are right here, that are masked out in the blue. And I may speed things up here to just let you watch while I, while I work here without having to do it at speed. If you have any questions, please uh, let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and answer it to the best of my ability. Again, got to bring this back here before we go back to the edge so we don't run into any issues with tiling there. 
this one, let's see, let's do something wild with this one. Let's say this one came up pretty far out here, but again, just gotta make sure we're making those edge tiles all connect. This is goofy, water would probably never do this, but I just wanna show you how to make this a little more asymmetrical and some of the fun things that you can do with it. I mean, you could even put, let's put a tide pool here. Make a tide pool, make it, make it look like something that might actually happen. I'm just putting the white around the edge to make it look a little bit more like there's some sea foam, something fun happening there. But again, as long as we're keeping, we can do whatever we want in this part, as long as we're keeping those edge tiles matching up to what's around it and to the other tiles, keep it consistent, we'll be fine adding some, some fun little doodads here and there. So you can see we've got some variation in our tile set here. We've got some fun things that it's gonna be doing with our edges. Now, an important thing to remember before you save this out to be used, you're gonna wanna turn off your mask layer so that you don't have the blue highlights anywhere. Cause if you have the blue highlights, they're gonna show up. So turn that off. I've got extra here cause I did some stuff but that's okay. Again, that's everywhere where the black was with this like reddish tan color. That ain't gonna show up. So let's go file, save as. Okay. And you can save it as your file type. Uh, we also can do export as in Ace Bright, but Whatever the case may be, you're going to want to make sure you're in the PNG format. Um, in A sprites, you're going to want to make sure you're at 100%. You want all frames, you want all layers, or you want visible layers rather. Not all layers. If you do all layers, or just you can pick, you could even just pick your layer one in my case, if that's where all of your artwork has been done. Make sure up here you select the path that you want. You can change the name of the file here. You want to be in ping and then in my case actually I'm going to change this name to 25 part beach template okay export and then we're gonna move over to tile pipe so actually before we go to tile pipe we're gonna need to come into Godot and set up a project for this to work in it can be a new project, it can be an existing project, doesn't matter. Um, if you have an existing project, you can skip this step. If not, new project, create your new project, select your path, etc., etc. And you're good to go. I'm just going to go ahead and open that. And then we're going to come over to tile pipe, finally. Um, so when you first open tile pipe, this is what you're going to be greeted with. You're going to be have, you're going to have um, the sample here and kind of a demo of how this works with the texture that is by default provided. And uh, this is 
the tile set that I believe is referenced in the documentation of tile pipe itself. So if you have interest in other rule sets here, go check out that. For our purposes, I'm going to be, we are going to make a new tile and enter the name here. I already have one set up um, because this is like the third time I've recorded this. But uh, I'm going to come in here and then you'll get this new blank, this blank slate here. We are going to come up to our texture. We're going to add the texture in that we just saved. So you come up to add texture, navigate to wherever your texture was saved from your graphics editing software. Open that up. We're going to apply the 25 part 256 no symmetry dot JSON rule set. If for some reason this isn't showing up, you might need to go download that from uh, the tile pipe GitHub repository directly. Uh, which can be accessed through the itch.io page. For the template, you can choose either 256 16 by 16 or 32 by 8 doesn't matter. Personal preference is the decider here. So we do that. And this looks very wrong. So there are some settings here that we're going to have to change to make this look right. First of all, our input tile size is not 64. For my project, it's 48 because again, we're at three and a half times, or three and a half. We're at one and a half times 32, which is 48. For your project, it might be different or maybe not. Which we can already see looking better here already. And that's because your, yours might actually look something more like this at this point. And that's just because we have to turn the merge pixels all the way up and the overlap pixels all the way down. Now one, thing that we're going to have to do too because this is an alpha software and it doesn't always work right turn on the output resize and make that the same as your working size so in my case again 48 not doing that will lead to some issues where the uh, tiles will out ex will export to 64 by 64 by default which is again not what we want so we want to make sure we have it sized appropriately on the on the other end of this. Now down here you can see our tiles look pretty good. We've got some interesting asymmetrical tile sets going on. Uh, you'll notice that we still have that pesky mask there, but that will not show up in Godot when it's time to actually place the tiles down because of the overlapping situation that we mentioned at the beginning, <coughs> excuse me, at the beginning of this video. Now, 256 is a lot of tiles, but luckily, because of the magic of tile pipe, we do not actually have to do any of that bit masking. We don't have to do any of it. It's already taken care of when you select the Godot 3 tile set here. If you select texture and only export the texture, you're kind of on your own. Um, but if you choose Godot 3 tile set, it'll do it for you and we can just export that. Now you might get an error when this screen pops up and if that's the case, uh, just click through it. You'll be okay because this is again, alpha software, it's got some quirky bugs in it, but it still works. So up here, you're gonna save your tile set into your Godot project that you created previously, your existing Godot project. It has to be an existing project because this exports as a T-Res file, which is a Godot specific type of file. It's a Godot resource file, as you can see here. So we're going to name our tile set. Okay. It should automatically pick a texture to, or a uh, file path for your texture. If it doesn't, you can select and choose one there and name it there. This does have some compatibility with collisions. I have not experimented with that yet, so mess with that at your own risk. But for now, we should just have our tile name, our tile mode should be auto tile three by three, which is gonna take care of that bit masking we were talking about. And it's gonna give you your texture. So we save that. And then we come over to our Godot project and look here, we've got our template that was exported, which is our texture as a ping. And we've got our asymmetrical beach 256 T-Res file. So automatically exported as a Godot tile set, which is just amazing. 
Now, mine is pixel, so I do want to do the, um, un the uncheck filter and re-import just to avoid any issues with blurriness. And then we're going to go ahead and test this out. I'm going to create a new 2D scene. I'm going to add a tile map to it. I'm going to add my asymmetrical beach as the tile set. We're going to click on that and we're going to paint. And then, uh oh, well, that's not right. So we're going to come down here and we notice that our cell size is not our target size. Our target size is 32 by 32. Enter that in and there you go. All the masking is disappeared. We've got a lovely diagonals tile set. You can be in boxes, you can do diagonals, you can connect things, you can do just so much with this now and that took like almost no time in comparison to having to do all of that by hand so sorry about that jarring transition here but I wanted to load up my personal project and show you how you can build a um, a path on top of another terrain a lot of you are probably familiar with this uh, but this is how I have it set up in my game. So I have my base terrain here, which is just all these green grass tiles, right? I have a second tile map over top of that, which is my path. So I can take that tile set that I just made. Um, in this case, it's my path with grass. In the other case, it was my uh, beach tile set. But I can take this right over top of that matching green and just start painting. And let me turn off my... Hang on, I have a base here. Let me turn off that. I can come in here and I can just paint my path in and it integrates seamlessly with that green background because it's the same color and it just works great. So I have my diagonals, I have my beautiful transition between my path and my grass, and as the dev of Tile Pipe adds more and more features and randomization options to tile pipe I plan on covering more so if you'd like to see when I update this video for those features make sure you subscribe to the channel um, doing that will also kind of help me out because it'll let YouTube know that you found what you wanted to in this video and help other people find it and that would be awesome if this video helped you please like it and consider subscribing. I don't put out videos super often, so I'm not gonna clog up your notifications, but you might wanna hit the bell icon so you don't miss it when I do upload something. Also, it would be extra helpful if you left a comment and let me know what you liked or didn't so I can improve. And if you've used this video to help with a project you're working on, I'd really love to hear about it. As always, thanks for your time and happy Godoing.